Hello and welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got a review for you this week. So anyway, uh, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony, Ponyville Mysteries Comics, issue number 4. In this issue, the Killing Mark Crusaders investigate a case of missing spa water and all signs point to a member of the Apple family being the culprit. Oh no! That's terrible, that's really bad. So anyway, before we head into the review, let's, well, give our first impressions. Anyway, uh, first impressions are like this. This comic is pretty interesting. I, I do like how the story is set up. I do like how uh, we got a problem. We look for the solution. Or in this case, we investigate or search for problems that are what what not and the solution was kind of obvious if you seen the series for a while now and yeah um oh wow it's not bad i i do like the internal conflict that apple bloom had with this one because oh no is the apple family the culprit for all this oh no that's very bad ah <clears throat> But, if you have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back, welcome back. So, we start off the comic with, well, uh, Rarity treating the girls to some R&R. Also with Rainbow Dash. Uh, at the spa, getting their paddies and medis, getting a massage. And to end it all, they're gonna get a steam bath or steam steam sauna so that's awesome that's awesome so when Rarity tells um, the Lotus Twins to hit the button they couldn't because it seems that there's no water coming from the lake stream what was it called um, uh, spring yes uh, there's no water in the spring so the Cutie Crusader says that, oh, this looks like a job for us to go solve the problem. Alrighty then. So let's head out. So they head towards where the spring is, but neglected to ask the proper location. They bump into Zakura, and Zakura says, yo, you want to go to the spring? It's right beyond the creek over there. And the CMCs went off. When they found the spring, it's still filled with water. But hey, it seems that there's some kind of uh, dam that's blocking the water. And by this point here, I personally thought that, oh, could it be beavers? Are beavers involved with this? Maybe they should call Fluttershy because if beavers are doing this, um, the most logical pony to ask to solve this problem is Fluttershy. <clears throat> but they didn't jump to that conclusion and they decide to pan right. And they see that, hey, there's some kind of contraption over here. It looks like a pump. And the pump here is kind of uh, siphoning water someplace else. So they follow the pipe through this uh, woods and they end up heading to Sweet Apple Acres and this hits Apple Bloom like a brick truck or hits Apple Bloom like a truck because oh no does this mean one of my uh, uh, siblings or parental you uh, figure is involved with this case that can't be true. Come on. Uh, let, let's go Let's go see where this ends up. So as they go further along the pipe, as following the pipe, they see that it ends near the... Uh, well, it ends near Sweet Apple Acres. And this worries Apple Jack... Sorry, uh, this worries Apple Bloom a lot. And having one of the family members being involved with this case really bumps her out. And I'm going to pause here. 
So, like I mentioned before, I do like the setup. The setup is pretty neat and cool. We have the CMCs getting their reward for helping the town with their mysteries and whatnot, from bowling to arson to what was their first case? Uh, uh, hospital supplies getting uh, ransacked by birds. So, uh, Rarity and Rainbow Dash decides, hey, um, why don't we treat the girls to some uh, nice reward? Like, the day of the spa would do everyone well. I mean, uh, getting pampered and whatnot. So, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. And the way that this case pops up is kind of creative too because uh, in the end, if it's not because of the spa, somebody might have just said, oh no, uh, we're, there's no water. What's, what's going on here? So <laughs> having the CMC just go out and f- look for the problem or just look what's going on is kind of smart here. But there's always a question that leads up to why are the CMCs doing this? What happened to adult ponies? Are are they not supposed to do this? It's kind of their job, right? No? Yes? So, it's always that. (laughs) But anywho, uh, that's besides the point. And having the dilemma of, oh no, uh, could my family be involved with this? It's always one of those things where Oh, that that is bad. Like, oh, um, my judgment is going to be affected by this whole scenario or this whole case. So I can't really do my job well. So there's always a caveat there. But anywho, uh, let's hit on to the cross-examination or questioning. <clears throat> so the CMCs hit off and find Applejack. Asking Applejack how is it going and whatnot. And Applejack says, yeah, I'm kind of tired. We know has been barking her head off since uh, the, the, the last few nights. Like somebody's, like some ponies out there. Oh, I feel like this line is very important, but doesn't really come up later on. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. I, I don't know. So, uh... The girls want to ask more, but Apple, Apple Bloom kind of pulled him away. Oh no. And the girl says, um, Apple Bloom, why did you pull us so quickly? I mean, it's like we, we haven't really answered, uh, asked all our questions. And Apple Bloom here says, like, Applejack is the, most honest pony around. She's the element of honesty and I doubt she would lie to us. That may be true, but still, you need to ask all the questions. Get it out there and just let things flow naturally. And the fact of the matter is, why didn't Apple Bloom or the rest, I mean, okay, Apple Bloom tell Applejack that there's a strange looking pipe from the creek going through our estate. I mean, that's something Applejack, Big Mac, and Granny Smith would love to know because of what happened later on. So this line of questioning goes along. Uh, Meet up with Granny Smith. Don't Don't really ask her about the pipe. They're just trying to coax her into feeling guilty or making her look guilty I, I don't know same goes for big mac and big mac just says yes no and with that the girls are out of ideas and head to sugar cube corner to well have some cake and here's the part that really irks me on a personal level because apple bloom is talking about the case and whatnot and snips and snails overheard her and are spreading rumors about oh how there's this big pipe going through uh, this there's this pipe from the um 
spring going through sweet apple acres and whatnot and it's uh, and the apple family is kind of uh, what you would call this um, siphoning water from these um, what you call this um, spring and <laughs> while this is going on Apple Bloom says oh man I, I need to head home early like there's uh, we, we're gonna set up shop in the market tomorrow and whatnot so <laughs> I'll get you I'll catch, catch you guys tomorrow and yeah the, the rumor spread fast and every pony in town is just like giving him the black eye nobody and the next morning nobody's coming to their business and whatnot and it seems twilight caught wind of this and is questioning twilight sorry uh, is questioning applejack about the whole thing and uh, this is the first that applejack heard of the news and Apple Bloom says, well, not really. And she says she's like kind of knew something, but I didn't really want to tell. And before she could uh, talk to them about it, the CMCs, well, at least Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle comes along uh, wanting to talk to Apple Bloom in private, but it seems like it's a bit obvious in what's going on. And Apple Bloom says, Yo sis, yo sis, uh, calm down. We, we the CMCs, will get right down to it. And um, we'll try and solve the problem. So no need to get your um, feathers in the rough. Something like that. And I am going to stop here. So, like I mentioned before, the part of the rumors really irked me a lot. I mean, it's a good mechanic to have uh, a good storytelling mechanic to have to kind of put the ire on the apple family even though it's not their fault but at the same time too it's one of those things where dang that that really sucks like it's not their fault and they're getting the blame oh man and then like there's no proof of evidence that the pipe exists it's just a rumor i mean we as the audience know that the pipe does exist, but the ponies here, they just hear a kid tell them about it. I mean, knowing the adults, they didn't even check. So that what irks me a lot. And uh, this this could have been one of those things where there's a f um, cutaway scene or flashback to where, oh... Princess Twilight got complaints about the situation and how Applejack is responsible. And Twilight kind of investigates it herself, looking at the facts. And when she sees the pipes and whatnot, she goes to Applejack and confronts her. I mean, that could have been a much better story mechanic. But... But that will end up with a lot of conflict between Twilight and Applejack, and then when the next scene will that what what happened the next scene will just ugh. So having the CMCs kind of correct their mistakes is kind of commendable here. But anywho, uh, the <coughs> ponies here says that oh sorry the CMCs here said that they're going to try and figure this out and they are so uh let's see uh i'm reading lines again because i forgot now that i think about it who needs to deliver the spring the cakes ah uh, okay um the cmcs go walk along and try to figure out who could be responsible uh sweetie bell as uh, think who would need to divert the spring, uh, the cakes, quills, and so far, or uh, the ribbon seller person. And suddenly, we are greeted to the most entertaining yet 
Ah, oh, man. I, I love them, but they're just jerks. Uh, Flim and Flam. They're selling their amazing purple uh, plum pear apples. Something like that. It's a hybrid of a plum, a pear, and an apple. And the most delightful hybrid fruit you'll ever encounter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 15 bits per specimen. And <laughs> Apple Bloom rushes up to the front and kind of confronts the uh, Flim Flam Brothers. <laughs> and the Flim Flam Brothers kind of antagonize her, saying that, well, if it isn't a member of the Apple family, our incredible inventions use less water than what's being delivered to sweet apple acres it's that so oh brother of mine yeah and then like the crowd goes boo boo and apple chest sorry and apple blue almost decks the two ponies like grabbing them by their necktie and threatening them well not really threatening them she's the filly but still um <laughs> apple bloom here says i know you two are the one stealing the waters from the uh, for these hybrid fruits and the apple uh, and blaming the apples, which is kind of makes sense because what I did what I left out in the very beginning is how the machine looks like, and the machine looks like inventions of the Flim Flam Brothers with their moronically placed piping that doesn't make sense. So yeah, um. <laughs> Their, uh, how would I put this? Their trademark design is all over the machine. But anywho, with that, the CMCs head back to the scene of the crime. Take a look see at the machine, and uh, take a look see at how this thing connects to them. And Sweetie Belle just says, "Let's get back to." Sweet Apple Acres and prove it's not the apples once and for all. And they follow the pipe and lead up to the tree. This time they really take a closer look and Sweetie Belle noticed that, hey, there's some uh, leaves here, there's some ground that's been disturbed. And once they uh, kind of brush it off, it's the pipe and it's leading towards... Well, the flim flam, uh, a clearing where the flim flam brothers are siphoning water just to um, water the fruits and whatnot. And <coughs> uh, let's see, uh, over the mine, I would told you this tree would need too much water once the fruit came in. I know, but I didn't think any pony would be smart enough to figure out that we've been okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, is the the Flim Flam brothers are involved with this? It's their fault, and they're putting the blame on the Apple family. And being discovered, they put their haul into their truck and head off to the next place. And Scootaloo just says, "Are we just gonna let them leave?" Which Apple Bloom responds to, how do we stop them? And yeah, with that, the machine been dismantled and the spring is flowing naturally and everything is A-OK. -okay. Uh, the townsfolk uh, apologize to Applejack and everything is fine and dandy. Yay. And now they can go back to their steam bath. Woohoo. And with that, coming ends. Okay, so. <sighs> Let's go to final thoughts. I like the setup. I, I like how the comic is told. I, I like the overarching arc. But there were so many, uh, what you would call this, um, key points that kind of blared out. Uh, first thing was we know now with the uh, with we know now barking all night, uh, and then uh, Applejack telling the CMCs that, hey, um, 
I, I, I'm a bit worried about uh, mom and dad's tree, the hybrid pear apple thing. Uh, trees like that usually need a lot of water. And guess what? Uh, the Flim Flam Brothers had a hybrid of pear, plum, and apple. So, it <laughs> like once everything got to hard words. Once everything got uh, pieced together, we can clearly tell that oh, it's the Flim Flam Brothers and so on. But be- even before that, like it's obviously them. Who would who would create a machine with that color scheme and with uh, it's 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 one of those things where obvious is obvious. I mean, if they. If it weren't the Flim Flam Brothers, I would have been surprised. And oh my, um, the Flim Flam Brothers are getting double, fr- uh, I'm sorry, are getting frame. Um, not only that they threw the blame on the Apple family just to kind of, um, put the scent away from the Apple, sorry, uh, the Flim Flam Brothers, but if somebody was smart enough to go investigate and would see that machine and would say, hey, that's the Flim Flam Brothers design. And would think that, hey, that they're the culprit. And once they kind of go through everything and whatnot, I mean, it would have been fun it, if it happened that way. But now nah, I didn't. It was kind of straightforward, straight to the point, which eh, I'm kind of cool with it. But overall, it was kind of a fun story to read through, especially when I haven't read this in a long, long, long time. When did this came out? Oh my goodness. 2018. Oh my. August 29th of 2018. So it's been a while now. But overall, eh, it's, it's a good story. It's a good story. And well, leading up to this will be the last book to, for the issue. And, uh, let's read the synopsis for this one. Ah, okay. In this issue, the Cutie Mark Crusaders try to track down a priceless artifact that was stolen from Songbird Serenade. <gasps> Ooh, movie tie-in. Ooh, awesomeness. Not movie tie-in. Just a character from the movie used in the comics. <laughs> so that is for the next comic, and that will be the final one for this series. And yeah, I... It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'll probably, uh, including, uh, hopefully I can include Terra on the next one. If not, uh, it'll just be me alone. But uh, uh, some of you might be asking what happened to Terra. And well, Terra is going to get married soon. Uh, last two, three weeks, I don't know, probably, probably, really probably timey and stuff, uh, had his bachelor party, and I'm guessing he was in no state to record. So, yeah. Um, it's just me for now. But, uh, going forward, um, I, I hope, I do hope that he is available for the last issue of the Ponyville Mysteries, because that's going to be a cool one. And other than that, well, we'll just see how it goes. We'll just see how it goes. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. And also catch us on polyvalive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Best of Lag, and Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo and I'll and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya!